One of the things I've been thinking about the world is uh, memories. And um, I always think about that this time of year because with the new class um, graduating, you know, it's, it's never the same. Those people are gone, and, and we'll still be friends with them, and we'll go, and we'll follow them. And, and, uh, it, but it's going to be different. So I kind of think about what that class has been like. And I think about the school year. And, um, as I get older, I'll just the years of work start piling up, and um, this is the this is the tenth year of students I've had. So uh, you know, there's a lot of memories. Um, each year has its own special special group of memories. Um, but you know, I, I thought about this last night, and I thought, you know, there's only ultimately when it comes down to it, when we face God, when when we die and face God, there's only going to be one memory that comes back to mind, right? It's going to be, what did I do with Jesus? Like, people talk about, oh, there's going to be a big screen in heaven, it's going to flash all the bad stuff he did and all that. And maybe you get into the theology of, like, the great white throne and all the Christians in heaven and all that. But really, I don't think I'm, I don't think God's going to throw it in my face. I think the question is going to be, what did you do with Jesus when you were here on earth? Isn't that really the most important thing to remember? And the answer to that question, whatever is true about our life, is what's all that's going to matter. All these things we just talked about, as fun as they were, will not matter one bit. So, this is kind of our, we have two chapels left. Next week is going to be um, a worship chapel, kind of a celebration of the year. Uh, a lot of music, some drama, and, and things like that. This is the last time that we'll actually have a speaker. Um, and I thought, you know, I think we need to kind of go back to exactly where we started at the beginning of the year, which was Jesus and yourself, right? Because when you walk out those doors on seven days, some of you may not ever be in church again. Um, some of you might not be in church for a while. Even over the summer, some of you guys, who knows what the summer will hold for you, good or bad. But I think it's kind of important that we revisit the person of Christ, and, and it's a message that I know you've heard before, but it's one that I don't think we can really hear enough. Um, and I've got a couple of videos that I want to show, because I think um, sometimes... <clears throat> pictures and, and sound explains things better than I can. So, uh, if there's one back there, it's on that Mozilla, it's yeah. the Good Friday one. Go ahead and um, put that one up. <laughs> it was a Friday, early morning. While the sun was still sleeping, Jesus was cheated, arrested for no reason but treason in men's hearts. And just like that, it starts. It was an unjust Friday. Six trials, nothing sticking, priests punching, judges kicking, slinging lies at infinity, beating down on divinity who, by grace, did not speak, obedient, meek, it was a painful Friday as daylight tumbled in, whips ripped the skin of the one who healed a thousand wounds. The one whose soul was right and true, left in shreds for something he did not do. It was an ugly Friday, the clawing crowd when given a choice. Let villain fly in single voice. But when Jesus' name was lifted high, could find no word but crucify, crucify. It was a bloody Friday filled with nails and wood and a man who would do what God only could, arms open wide, good enough to die for the very people who hung him out and bled him dry. It was a dark Friday a shout to the sky, a spear in the side, two Mary start to cry as angry earth trembles and black clouds swell quietly. Jesus goes through hell, dying in our place, dying well on Friday, Good Friday. How is it a day of such evil and pain ever got the word good in its name? This day of infamy, human villainy, 
when the world showed off its most evil face because there in that blood-stained place when they pulled the body down like seed to ground the author of life sprouted roots of grace that would once and for all save the human race this victory death a complete surprise as demons and devils with fear in their eyes realized that once a perfect man died the law was finally satisfied no more striving no more trying no more guilt no more dying the man who lived the way we should died the way only god could and that's why we call this friday good the day christ fell is the day mercy stood <laughs> So hold your faith, lift your praise, and remember, as good as Friday is, Easter is still on the way. Hope rising forever in three more days. Three more days.
say about him. We know what authors say about him, what musicians say about him. We have all this knowledge of what everybody else says about him. But sometimes we kind of avoid the real question. What do we say about him? What is your relationship with him like? In the end, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. When you face God, he's not going to care what everybody else said, right? He's going to care what you say. Like I said, every other chapel, every class we've had, every athletic achievement, every play we've had in this room, every performance we've had, every song that we've sung, every friendship you have, every memory you have with this year, ultimately they fade away and they mean nothing when you come face to face with God. God graciously allows us those awesome parts of our life while we're here on earth, and we should be thankful. But he's not going to be asking us about chapels. He's not going to be asking us about championships you won. He's not going to ask us about what play you were in. <coughs> You're going to have to account for your relationship with Christ. And I know it's so simple as a kid or a teenager, even as adults at times, that we just think, we kind of think of ourselves as invincible, even if we don't say that, we think we are. Like, we don't really consider the fact that we are going to die. Anybody on Facebook last night see the, the video of that young man, his name is Zach, Zach something. Um, he made a video called My Last Days. Um, he wrote a song called Clouds, I don't know if you remember the story or not, but anyways, I would highly encourage you to watch it. It's about this kid, Zach, he's 17. He, he had some sort of rare cancer, and he filmed like the last three months of his life. And he died yesterday. And that makes you think, you're watching this kid who just made this film, and now he's gone. Like that. He's gone. 17 years old. Could be any one of us, any time, right? Any moment, our life can be over. The Bible says that life is like a vapor. It's like a spray. You know, you spray something like hairspray or whatever, if you see it for a second, it's gone the next instant, right? We are hurtling towards eternity. I don't think we realize that. We are going faster than you imagine towards facing God. I guess the question comes back to where are you going right now? At the end of this school year, where are you right now? really think about where you are. If you had to face God right now, what would he say about your relationship with Christ? Because contrary to what a lot of people would have you believe, no one goes to heaven outside of relationship with Christ. It is the only way, the way, the truth, the life, right? There won't be any excuses when we're face to face with God. And I bring this I bring this topic up today and knowing there's a lot of Christians arguing with I know that many of you are Christians, so I, this is not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you guys to get saved again. I know a lot of you are saved, but it doesn't change the fact that there's probably a lot of people that aren't walking as closely to Christ as they should. All of us in this room fall into really a few categories. Either not a Christian, a Christian in name only, kind of that lukewarm Christian, or a Christian who desires a relationship with God, and all of those people still have work to do. But you know, I, I thought about this chapel. I thought I, it would be, I would be remiss to not bring this opportunity to you one more time. Say, do you know Christ? If you don't know, are you willing to know? Do you know Christ? But you're just sort of saying, you know, I'm gonna live myself. You should go ahead and close your eyes. We're not gonna have an altar call or anything like that because this is really. <coughs>
his word. Do you talk to Jesus every single day? Are you trying to live your life the way he wants you to live? Man was 
was unstoppable The grave couldn't hold him, hate couldn't mold him The world couldn't contain him, and neither can our minds Because he is the ultimate, more than, more than a teacher More than a prophet, more than a philanthropist More than a philosopher, shaman, spirit, guide He is untamable, uncontrollable, unexplainable, and unkillable Just ask the people who tried, he's alive With forgiveness ongoing, grace ever flowing Arms still holding your world and your life and everything in it Bigger than the sin that says you can't win it More ferocious than the fears that freeze you Stronger than the problem that sees you He is God, he is unstoppable He is here in grace and truth Holding out his hand asking Do you want to be unstoppable too? Because all it takes is four words Easy to say, hard to do Four words I believe in you Mean it Really mean it, and you will be unstoppable too. What my life is focused on. A lot of times things are not going to you make you think, why, why am I living this way? And then I watch stuff like that and I go, okay, I don't know why I'm living this way. This is not just the eternity that I'm talking about, it's also the life now, right? Unstoppable life with, with God on our side, nothing can stop us, right? Not even death. Even death, because after that first video, after the, the death of Christ, and he looks death in the face, as this video says, and destroys it. What do we have to fear, right? When we have a relationship with Christ, death is, death is not an obstacle, it's actually something good, it's something to look forward to as a Christian. Now we can really live our life. We can really live our life to the fullest.